I installed this wireless doorbell on my house and I love it. It works great, but I hate those holes left over from the old doorbell. So I'm going to fix it with a 3D print. I'll explain it all on today's Filament Friday. So it's a rainy cold day, day after Christmas. I'm out here on the front porch and this is something I've been wanting to do. So it's a lazy day. Why not do a 3D print? This is the doorbell I bought on Amazon. It's only $14 and this thing works great. What I love most about it is the chime or the bass actually just plugs into a plug inside your house. And then it's got a wireless push button that you put on the outside of the house with double-sided sticky tape. And the batteries have lasted more than a year already. They're still going strong. But it bugs me every time I look at it. I got these holes left over from the old push button. There's actually wires behind this thing that I had to cut and tuck away. So now I want to find something to cover this up, kind of like a frame. The challenge was finding something that was thin enough to get behind this and still cover these holes and be wide enough to go between the pillars and make a frame that this push button switch would go on top of. And I also wanted to screw to it so it'd be permanent. And then this is the one I found from user Btalic and it looked perfect. I may have to modify a little bit and resize it, but it looks like it's gonna work. Now I'm gonna print this on an A1 Mini because it's the only printer I have at home. It's down in my basement. So hopefully this thing will fit on the bed of the A1 Mini. And I highly recommend you check out matterhackers.com if you're looking to get one because right now I think they're the only ones I have them in stock and they offer free shipping. I'll put a link to them in the description below. Now this frame is actually for a different doorbell that actually has a camera in it, but I was hoping this would work because it's designed really well and I could just design a new one in Tinkercad, but I like modifying versus just starting from scratch. It's easier. And this thing looks like it's gonna fit perfectly. I brought it into Bamboo Studio for the A1 Mini and it fit, but I got to resize this thing. I need it to be 89 millimeters wide, which resulted in 166 millimeters tall, which I could adjust it, but I wanted to keep the proportions. And it fit. It fit good. So I was happy with that. So I'm just going to print it at a 0.2 layer height. I sliced it and it said it would only take 52 minutes to print. Perfect. And it's essentially solid all the way through, even though it was a 15% infill. And here's the result. I used a natural color PLA. It looks kind of white, but it's not. It's called the natural color, but it's what I had. I didn't have any other colors with the printer. So I like how it turned out. It looks pretty smooth on the top surface. So this should be fine for putting outside behind the doorbell. And I like the shape. I like the size. It's going to make a nice cover. It fits between the pillars. I got two holes to screw into that'll get covered by the, the doorbell itself. And this is just held by double-sided tape. So I want to put this here, but it's got these nubs that will be exposed, and I don't like how that'll look. So I'm going to take this into Tinkercad and take these off and then reprint it. And I like this design because it's got like a chamfer around it. So, and this, this triangle thing, I don't care because the double-sided tape will go in here and cover the screw holes uh, with this case. So now I just need to go into Tinkercad, take these off, and reprint this. I brought the original design of the Tinkercad. I'm going to drop the ruler here so I can grab the corner and drag it by holding the shift key as well so everything goes in proportion and drag it so it's 89 millimeters wide. And once I got that, now I just need to get rid of those bumps. So I'm going to reposition the bed right on that surface and then bring in a cube to take away those bumps. So it's only going to go as deep as that surface that I dropped the bed on. And then I just stretch this out and I'm actually going to center it. Not that it really matters, but I'm going to center it to that plate. And then I'll just group this together and it should take away those bumps. And there you go. Now it's got this square around it. You can see where it was, but that's in Tinkercad. That won't show up in the print. Let me show you. So if I export this as a .stl and bring it into Bamboo Lab Studio, you can see that square is not there. So I sliced this and now it's 51 minutes, a little bit less because I got rid of the bumps. So let's print this. And actually I'm gonna export it to the SD card because I don't really use the Wi-Fi with it. And I just save it to the model folder and I just pop the SD card inside of it and then click on prints and then it'll show up. And click on the plate, click print. And now it goes to town. First layer looks excellent. And here's the results. The results I'm really happy with. The top surface, which is going to be visible, 
is fine. It's perfectly fine. There's no warping. There's no nothing. That first layer went down and grabbed. And I contributed a lot of that to the BQ Cryo Grip. I swear by these. I have this on multiple printers and especially on my minis. I love this little bed material. It works so well. It grabs, but then once it cools down, it releases. So if you're looking to upgrade your A1 Mini, I highly recommend it or any of your 3D printers. I'll put a link to it in the description below. To install this, the first step is to get this doorbell off, and that double-sided tape held really well. But once I pried it, it popped off, and now you can see all the holes and the wires and everything that this thing was covering up. So this is what the plate is going to cover first, and then I'll put the doorbell back on it. Here's the 3D printed plate, and you can see I sized it perfectly. It goes between the pillars, the holes themselves where this thing's going to mount covers everything so I'm just going to shoot the first screw in the top here and I can pivot this thing a little bit to get it lined up and like Jimmy DeResta says if it looks straight it is straight so now I can shoot the second screw and once that's in place then we can reinstall the push button switch. I probably could have used some shorter screws but this is looking really good so now I got to make sure that the push button switch covers those screws and it looks like it does. Now that original double sided tape is not going to work as well. I can feel it. It's just not grabbing like I'd hoped it would. And it's got a gap there in the center anyway that it's not grabbing to. So that's why I went and got other tape. I have this double sided lock type power grab. It's really strong double sided tape. So I'm going to put a strip of this on the back and see how well this holds. And it actually will go in that little slot and grab the wood. I mean, it doesn't look that thick, but it's thicker than what you'd realize. And then if I push this hard enough, it's going to grab. So I'm just going to push this in place, and I can already feel this thing is grabbing. It's not going anywhere. This tape works great. It's amazing what a simple little 3D print can do for your situation. This thing covered the holes perfectly, made a nice frame around this switch, and it looks like it's been there, you know, and the color is not bad. My wife wants me to maybe consider doing another one in black, but I didn't have that filament right now, so I may end up redoing this if she don't like the color, but so far, it's much better than what we had before. And useful prints like this are something I just love to do, and this is what I love most about 3D printing. B. Talek designed this for his doorbell, but then shared the design on Thingiverse, so I could come in, download his design and modify it in Tinkercad to make it work for my situation so I could cover those holes in my house and then print it on any printer. I print it on the A1 Mini, a low cost printer, but it could be any 3D printer and then put it on my house, solve my problem, all because he shared the design. Thank you very much. I also want to give a shout out to my Patreon supporters. Without your support, this channel could not happen. Thanks for watching. And here's a few other videos you might like. If you want to help support the channel, Patreon's the best way to do it. And if nothing else, click on that logo and subscribe. I'll see you next time right here at Chuck Hollibuck's Electronic Products and Filament Friday.